Hello, uh, this is geography for class seven. So we are dealing with the chapter atmosphere. Before the lockdown, we had already begun with it, but we could not complete it. So today we are going through the entire chapter. Please pay attention. What is the atmosphere? As you already know, it is a thick layer of air. It's a mixture of different gases. It surrounds the earth from all sides, much like a blanket. In the atmosphere, we have around 78% of nitrogen and 21% of oxygen. And the remaining 1% is made up of various gases like argon, carbon dioxide, ozone, helium, hydrogen. The lower layers of the atmosphere have got a higher concentration of oxygen as well as water vapor and dust particles. The gravitational pull of the earth holds the atmosphere in place okay so the atmosphere exerts a pressure on earth due to the gravitational pull let's move on to the composition of the atmosphere in this pie chart you can see the nit that nitrogen and oxygen take up the majority of space whereas the other gases take up only a little amount how does the word atmosphere come this word, the atmosphere, is derived from two words, atmos and sphere. Atmos means vapor, okay? So, initially, the scientists did not know what exactly was the composition of uh, the air around us. So, they thought it was just various gases, okay, like vapors, like water vapor. So, therefore, they coined the term atmos, meaning vapor. Later on, they came to know of what the different gases were. So, nitrogen and oxygen makes up 99%, whereas only 1% are other gases. Out of that, carbon dioxide and ozone plays a very, very important role. As you know very well, carbon dioxide is what helps uh, plant life to survive. It is also responsible for global warming because it absorbs a lot of heat. Ozone protects our earth from the harmful um, effects of the ultraviolet rays. All right. So around 15 kilometers of the lower parts of the atmosphere contains water vapor. And how is water vapor made? It is made by the evaporation and transpiration from vegetation and the different water bodies. This I think you have already done in your different classes. All right. So in the atmosphere, we also have dust and salt, which is present very naturally in the atmosphere. Of course, they're not huge chunks. They're very, very tiny microscopic particles. They are known as aerosols. They help in the formation of clouds and they also help to scatter the solar radiation. And because of this scattering of the solar radiation, our sky also appears blue. Now let's move on to the structure of the atmosphere. Uh, you do remember that the atmosphere has got five layers. Starting from the base, from the surface of the earth, we begin with the troposphere, move on to the stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, and the outermost layer is the exosphere. So here you have a chart which shows the height in kilometers, which are, what are the principal layers, the temperatures and the transport and natural phenomena of each layer. Please go through this at your own um, convenience. So let's go on to the first layer here. In the background, you can see that we have the troposphere. It extends around 18 kilometers over the equator and 8 kilometers over the poles. The word tropo here means change. Okay, in this layer, we have a lot of changes like weather, clouds, rain, snowfall, lightning, hailstorm, and so many other weather phenomena. It all occurs here. In this layer, we have a lot of warmth because this layer, because it's thicker, absorbs the heat radiated by the earth. And in this layer, we have dust particles and other impurities too. The temperature here decreases by one degree centigrade for every 166 meters that we climb up. Okay, for 166 meters we climb up, 
the temperature goes down by 1 degree centigrade. This is called the lapse rate. Now, this a layer of the troposphere is separated from the stratosphere by an imaginary layer called the tropos. All right. So now let's move on to the next layer. That's the stratosphere. Strat means layers. Here, strong winds, which are called jet streams, blow and create a lot of disturbances in waves. So layers. All right. This layer extends to about 50 kilometers from the Earth's surface. And here, it's much warmer. You can see in the background, you have got the stratosphere, the tropopause, the stratosphere, and the stratopause. It extends up to 50 kilometers. This layer does not have clouds, dust, or water. And in this layer, we do have the ozonosphere also, which we will be dealing with in a later slide. This layer is separated from the mesosphere by the stratopause. Okay. Now the mesosphere. This is the third layer from the bottom or the third layer from the top. So meso literally means middle. So it is the middle layer amongst all the five layers. It extends to about 80 kilometers from the Earth's surface as you can see in the background. Here the temperatures drop steadily. And when you reach an elevation of about 70 kilometers to 85 kilometers, then the temperatures drop really hugely. Okay, so this uh, area can have a low of minus 110 degrees centigrade, which is extremely, extremely freezing cold. This area is important. This layer is important because it protects the earth, the meteors and asteroids, burn up in this zone and protect us. It does not allow us to be hit by the meteors and asteroids up to a great extent. The next layer that we have is the thermosphere and the mesosphere is separated from the thermosphere by the imaginary layer called the mesopause. Now in the, mes in the thermosphere we have a height of 450 to 6 100 kilometers from the Earth's surface. Here temperatures rise steadily and you can have it extremely extremely hot up to 1400 degrees centigrade. So the name itself thermosphere, the word thermo meaning heat, itself tells us how hot this place can be. This layer is also known as the ionosphere as it contains electrically charged particles which are called ions. And these charged particles help in transmitting radio waves back to the Earth. So what happens because of that? It helps us to communicate via satellite. All right. So this is a very, very important layer for communication. Also, the thermosphere absorbs a lot of UV radiation and X-rays given off by the sun. One important and interesting thing you have here is that the thermosphere have the auroras which are the northern and southern lights, which are very, very beautiful lights, which occur naturally in the thermosphere from the poles towards the equator. So this thermosphere or ionosphere is separated from the exosphere by the ionopause. Exo means outside. So this layer that we have, the exosphere, is the outermost layer of the atmosphere. It reaches up to a height of about 1600 kilometers. Okay. And this layer has got extremely thin air and very, very low pressure. Temperatures can be as high as 300 degrees centigrade. And we cannot say, okay, so till here is the exosphere and this is outer space. It doesn't work that way. The exosphere, because it is so, it is filled with very, very thin air and very low pressure, it gradually peters out. It gradually merges with outer space. Okay, you can see it out in the background too. 